This video demonstrates the use of a little utility I've written which enables me to use my computer keyboard as an input to Sonic Pi. I can either use it to play notes or to trigger some live loops which are waiting for cues. On the top right of the screen here I have a terminal window and it's about to run a Ruby script called Terminal Controller 2.rb and if I press the uh, return key here that starts the script running. You could see that there's nothing appearing on the screen because it's actually polling and waiting for me to press a key. And when I press a key, that will actually um, appear on the screen. And if you look down at the bottom of the uh, Sonic Pi screen here, you can see that that has sent an OSC message uh, to the address OSC slash key with a number 97, which is actually the ASCII representation of the lowercase a I printed. If I did uh, an uppercase a, I get 65 down here, which is the capital A representation. Coming over to Sonic Pi, we have a program here which is going to run a live loop called get key, which you can see down here. And this is going to receive the OSC key message and respond to it. It's going to extract the uh, number of the key which is pressed and then it's going to check whether it is in one of this, this list of keys here. And these are laid out uh, as a piano keyboard. So we've got A which is going to actually correspond to the note C4 up here. And then we've got W which is going to respond to C sharp. And then we've got S which is going to respond to D and so on. So we've got in this row along the keyboard um, the keys of the keyboard. And you'll see that also in this live loop we are going to respond to the keys 1 to up to 9, up to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, and each one of these is going to give a cue. And further down here we have a series of live loops and when each of them receives the relevant cue it will play uh, the Sonic Pi code which is associated with it. So we can trigger sequences of sounds or um, samples which are in those live loops. So I'm going to run the Sonic Pi program as well now and that's now running and waiting for key presses and if I just start going along a scale A S D F G oops let's see I've got to remember to get uh, into the right section here to get the focus there. A, S, D. I had uh, a scale and I could do it quite fast. And I could play a little tune. Oops. Just my typing rather than the, uh, the keyboard uh, not responding. And if I was to press one of the keys on here, I'll press the number key 8, and that gives a drum roll. Number key 7, that gives a little fanfare. Number key 7 again. Number key 6, while it's still playing, that's going to play Ferro Jaka. And in fact, we have a record up here of all the keys that we've pressed. Um, Play something again. One thing this will not do is play chords. If I press two keys down, it will respond to one of them and start auto repeating it. But if I want to play two notes uh, together, I've got to play them really fast one after the other. So, quite a nice system for giving a simple keyboard. Um, on the machine here which you can use to play Sonic Pi. And if we just change this screen here you can see the script, the Terminal Controller 2 script there which is going to use some fairly gobbledygookish code here to uh, wait for a key press and then you'll see down here at the bottom it's going to send the OSC message addressed to slash forward slash key and the key number. We get an OSC 
uh, introduced by Sonic Pi, which always prepends slash OSC at the end of any incoming OSC messages, just so you can uh, differentiate them from incoming MIDI messages, for example. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And the, uh, the whole thing is written up in an article on my blog, and the reference to that is in the um, information just below the video. Thank you very much for watching.